raise the sails and lower the plank. It's the Working Crass Podcast with Lauren and Joshua. And I'm Joshua. And that's Lauren. There we go. And that's what we're doing today. Um, we're just going to talk about stuff. You ready? I'm you ready? Re- I'm, I'm ready to talk about the things. All right, let's go. Model with supersized booty can't find love because men are afraid of her butt. So I, I saw this headline and mm-hmm. I just saw it purely based off the headline. It made me laugh. So I was like, we need to talk about this. Lauren, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so what I like about this already is that I can't look at the whole butt and her face at the same time. It won't let me scroll. <laughs> if I want to look at the, I'll scroll down to look at the butt, but I can't see her face. So I got to scroll back up. I got to go way past the butt to get to the face. But for, for, People who are just listening, Mm -hmm. describe what you are seeing. Well, um, there is a woman and then there is another woman on her back where her butt should be. (laughs) (laughs) She's growing a second person out of her gluteus. If you've ever seen a pregnant woman, this woman is pregnant in the back. She's reverse pregnancy (laughs) is what this is. (laughs) <laughs> you can see the baby moving around inside. You you, you know the... Um, Wet me out of this booty. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out of this booty. I want to be born. <laughs> I've been growing in the booty my whole fetus life. Let me out of the booty, please. Wet me out of this booty. <laughs> I'm just a little butt baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little butt baby ready to be born. <laughs> I'm so ready to be born. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So uh, she, she says that men won't date her because they're afraid of her butt. And so far, <laughs> I'm a little scared, too. Are you afraid? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty frightening. Uh, it's, it's frighteningly large. Uh, it's just, you know, I don't know, necessarily know that it's the butt. But that actually makes me afraid and more the lack the fa- of judgment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, well, and then and even more than that, what scares me is the fact that her butthole's on her mouth <laughs> instead of on her ass. That is, that is true. I was thinking that as well. Those lips are she does have, thick. She, she does have a bit of a butthole mouth. So, and question for like anyone listening as well. Do, does anyone like lip injections? Is any guy like mm, those fat, voluptuous lip injections? They always look bad. They always look like like botched. Every lip injection looks botched. They always look like you got stung by a bee in your mouth. Correct. Correct. And then you're like, <laughs> I just want to be born. <laughs> I did a little butt baby. <laughs> I'm ready to be born. I just had the biggest lip, lip in the whole world. I just got butthole lips. I just have too many butthole lips. Uh, this beauty's booty is budding away. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm not just making things up. I'm reading the article here. This beauty's booty is, in, is budding in the way of romance. Okay. Let me try that one more time. This beauty's booty is budding in the way of romance. A Serbian Swedish woman with a supersized booty says she's struggling to find love because men are afraid of her surgically enhanced posterior. Oh, so that's not natural? I thought it was a natural butt. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Natasha Crown, 27, has undergone five Brazilian butt lifts in a bid to have the biggest bum in the world. Well, they really like the B alliteration. They do. Th- this, this article really likes to put a bunch of Bs together. And, they, <laughs> and she says she'll have a billion more butt lifts if, <laughs> if it gets her on that hot air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, 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 a bungling bunch of baboon butt lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh Wait, I said God. butt lips. Yeah, you did <laughs> say butt lips. I meant butt lips, but butt lips and butt lips are so similar. That <laughs> <laughs> Some butt lips do focus on the butt lips. <laughs> When I go for for my lift down there, I'm going to say, please, just lift only the lips. 
<laughs> so she's undergone five Brazilian butt lifts and a bid to have the biggest bum in the world. But the operations haven't helped her entice a long-term lover. I would think that the biggest butt in the world would entice a lover, don't you? Like, hey, I got the big... If it's the biggest, then it's kind of the best, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's that's the the rule is biggest equals best. My last relationship was seven years ago. Crown candidly confessed in a recent Truly interview. I am pretty extreme, so I think people are afraid of me. No, what's extreme about this? I say keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> BBLs, or Brazilian butt lifts, have exploded in popularity in recent years, with many women coveting Kardashian-style curves. Crown has also garnered more than 2 million Instagram followers, thanks to her enormous asset. So it's surprising to learn she is lonely. I do want to say, is this, it, this, this writer has a, a sense of humor. Yes, They this, have a sense of playfulness yeah, about yes. them. They were like, oh, I'm going to use a lot of butt puns today. <laughs> Thanks to her enormous <laughs> asset. <laughs> He's like at his keyboard. <laughs> yeah. That'll get him. <laughs> it's scary for men. You have my personality. Then you have my body. Then you have everything else on top of that. She stated, it's extreme. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a wild limb here yeah. and say, it's probably not the butt. That is scaring men away. <laughs> it's probably because you're a lunatic. <laughs> well, she describes herself as extreme, which is interesting. And she's dating me is extreme. And she spells extreme with an X. <laughs> That's extreme. how extreme. Oh, I see. <laughs> you know, like in like the X. It's like it's spelled with an X. There's an X in the word for sure. <laughs> She spells extreme. What does she, she spell it with? An, a K? She, she spells extreme the correct way. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Crown is pictured prior to under to going under the knife. Uh, wow, she looked she looked nice here. Why, why go under the knife? I, just something happened here where she's like, I have to have the biggest bat in the world. <laughs> I will not stop until butt is biggest. <laughs> not big, not bigger, biggest. She saw she saw the the first lift and went bigger, bigger, <laughs> bigger, <laughs> bigger, <laughs> bigger, <laughs> bubblier. <laughs> and has since spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars on surgery to have the biggest bum in the world. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. That, that's too much to be spending on your booty. Would you ever have plastic surgery? No. No. If you were forced to, what would you get? What do you, what do you mean if I was forced to? In a situation <laughs> where a man holds you down. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says, I won't let you go until you decide what plastic surgery you want. It could be anything in the world. It could be something that 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 enhances you sexually, uh, or it can be just something small. Any cosmetic plastic surgery, and then I'll let you go. I'll stop holding you down. I'm a nice guy. I'm reasonable. <laughs> I might be holding you down and forcing you to get a surgery, but I'm nice. Um, you get to choose the surgery. What is it? Yeah, I think... I'd, I would get like... His grip is getting tighter on you. <laughs> and he's holding you down a little harder. You better choose quickly. I think I would get the um, that that operation that makes you taller. Oh. Like, oh I've never heard of that. Put, put like extra like... Goo yeah, in your legs? Yeah, put some goo in my legs. Make me taller. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy's, the guy holding you down goes, I'll get some goo in your legs for sure. You know, this one's going to be easy. Goo, I can do goo. <laughs> you know when people have like one leg that's shorter than the other, so they wear those like really tall. Mm -hmm. They have like the one shoe that's really big. Mm -hmm. I want them to surgically attach those platform those shoes. shoes to me. <laughs> You would have like stilts. <laughs> we could get you some thick horseshoes that we nail to the bottom of your feet like a horse. Yeah. <laughs> and everywhere you walk, you clip clop. <laughs> they call <laughs> they call me old clip clop. Clip clop, clip clop. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's what I would get. <clears throat> 
Yeah. No, I, I would never get plastic surgery because, one, I just think it's a waste of money. But, two, I've never seen plastic surgery on anybody who's older look good. Mm-hmm. It, like, it always looks like something is not how nature should be. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's just not. Yeah, I agree. It's, I agree. I don't. It's not my cup of tea, but I'm not going to tell, you know, I, I don't care if somebody wants to, if that's something they want to do, fine. Yeah, However, absolutely. this lady, here's what the real thing is. She had too many friends that were telling her, yas queen, oh my God, you're beautiful. It's beautiful. You're Keep wonderful. Doing this. Keep yeah. doing it. Wow. Yas. No, it don't doesn't look. change. You're perfect. She goes, it looks bad. It looks like a baby's growing. No. No, you look beautiful. You're like so. No, no, there's literally a baby growing in my butt right now. No, it's a beautiful baby. Like, it's the hottest baby in the world. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. she didn't have one actually good friend to tell her. No, you 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 look look ridiculous. Yeah, don't don't do this. Yes, correct. See, that's the hallmark of a good friend is somebody who will be really honest with you and tell you that something that you're doing is ridiculous. This is why I don't understand people who can't like hear anything negative about themselves or their side is I'm like, that's not your friend. If all they tell you backs up everything you already believe and know, that's not a friend. That's somebody who is just saying what you want to hear. A true friend will tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And And the truth is, you got a baby in that butt <laughs> and it wants to get out. You got a butt baby and you need to release it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get born. <laughs> I want to get born so bad. <laughs> um, so she goes on this blind date. And just as Crown predicted, the man was turned off by her beautiful booty. He had no interest in going on a second date. That's says bountiful booty. What did I say? Beautiful. Oh, sorry. Bountiful. <laughs> <laughs> The man was turned (laughs) off by her bountiful booty. (laughs) Bounced around too much. Her beautiful, bountiful booty. (laughs) (laughs) She goes, I understand. It's too much for him. It's too much to handle all the thickness, all the curves, (laughs) Crown sadly stated after the disastrous date. It didn't work out. We're moving on, and hopefully I will find someone. And luckily, Lauren, they have a little bit of this on tape. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, no. Now, I need to full screen this video because we're going to need to see the whole butt. See, this is where I think maybe we shouldn't have a video podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it should be audio only. (laughs) Spare your eyes. Spare your eyes. Look away. If you're listening to this, congratulations. (laughs) If you're watching this, I'm sorry. (laughs) All right, here we go. I'm going on a blind date and I'm super excited, but I'm still nervous because I hope he's handsome. <laughs> oh, funny. My last relationship was seven years. Hey, I'll just throw this out there. I'm funny. <laughs> yeah. I'll go on a little date with a big old <laughs> booty baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like my woman with a puckered butthole on their mouth. I imagine this is what Bobby Kelly looks like if they did like drag makeup on him. <laughs> I'm pretty extreme, so I think people are afraid of me. It's scary for men. I'm pretty extreme. Sometimes when a man puts his penis inside me, my vagina, it grow a teeth. It bite the penis off. Bye-bye, a penis. You no longer have a penis. And that's what make me a pretty extreme. And so I think men are scared of me. Also, my butt is so big. Really scares people. <laughs> you have my personality, and then you have my, my body, and then you have everything on top of that. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's extreme. It's extreme. She keeps using extreme. And that means somebody at some point said, "Your what you do is extreme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into blood play. I like play with blood. I like uh, cut you open and play with your blood. It's a fun. I like a play with your organs. Your organs are a lot of fun. Play around. Sometimes I snack on uh, the food on the inside of your belly and I try what food you like and I say, ooh, that's good food. I put some of that food in my butt. <laughs> I like to cover myself with fire ants and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like a fire ant play? I fire ant play. 
I like I, I like to put little shards of glass in my butthole. <laughs> I have to eat real far. <laughs> <laughs> That is something put to think on, about. Put on the mining cap because you're going into the caves. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe don't that, forget to bring a flashlight so you don't get lost in the bot hole. <laughs> do you remember like a few years ago those Chilean miners that went that got like they got lost in this woman's <laughs> asshole? <laughs> That's what happened. That's the true story. <laughs> oh man! They just wanted to find the way out so they could breathe fresh air again. I want to be clear. We're not bullying this woman. If I were to meet this woman today, I'd ask her out on a date and I'd have sex with this woman. Is that okay with you? I mean, knock yourself out. She's beautiful. I mean, you probably will get knocked out by one of her butt cheeks because she'll turn and it will knock you out. (laughs) (laughs) This is such a dude thing too. A dude thing about like women is like, I'm not being mean to her. I'd fuck her. (laughs) I've so, heard so many guys be like, no, now hear me out. I'd still have sex with her. That's supposed to be like the condole, like, like I'm doing something mean, but I'd have sex with her. <laughs> like, well, whoop de doo Gorgeous. I'm ready. I'm going to have world's biggest bomb. That's my goal. And I'm going to reach it. What? When I was 20 years old, I did my first surgery and it was a BBL, Brazilian butt lift. I did my last Brazilian butt lift one month ago and that was my fifth. And soon I'm going to have my sixth. I've spent around $150,000 oh, that's, that's on my effect. surgery. Was so Maybe loud. more class yes. because if I go too sexy, he will be like intimidated, like too much. If I'm too sexy with my butt and my fire ant colony that I keep in my butt, then he might be scared away by the chains I have in my bedroom. <laughs> he might think my face is both melting and exploding at the same time, but this outfit is too sexy. It will keep him away. I don't want to be too sexy, you know, like uh, like a table saw and table saw my arm off. Because <laughs> I'm extreme and I might be too sexy and scare him away. But uh, sometimes I like a table saw my fingers first and then I'll do my wrist and take it easy so that he will like me. Oh my goodness. Like, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. He needs to look good, of course, oh, but he does. Pause it, pause it. You know, her, eat her butt cheeks kind of remind me of, you know, that episode of South Park when Randy gets cancer in his balls? The big balls? Mm hmm. The hippity hop? She think has. She could hit hippity hop on that butt. Although it's yeah. all surgical, so it probably hurts like all the time. Don't you think this hurts? I mean... My bot hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely hurts the baby that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be hurting, baby. I'm just up here having a crazy sex with a table saw and a snake. Uh, no, I, I... I don't know. Wouldn't it be hard? I think it, it's probably, like, hard, right? Uh, the butt? Like, hard like a rock? Yeah. I, I tell you what, I'm hard. <laughs> I'm hard just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you need to have like abs, abs. People who have abs, they're like, there's so much ego in them. So I don't There's have so ta- much ego and the people have abs and they work real hard to a workout and be all sexy. But for me, I just go get the surgeries and that is easier. And it makes me even more sexy than someone with abs. Who would want someone with abs when you have me over here? I have poisonous snakes in my bedroom slithering around. And that's I'm just extreme. I got the biggest butt and with a baby in it. <laughs> My butt is the size of the Titanic cruise ship, but it is not ego. It is not ego. Only abs is ego. Only abs is ego. Surgery, no ego. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say surgery, ego. No, surgery, no ego. Sorry. Bye-bye. Abs is ego. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the, the idea of, you know, somebody like working uh, out to a point where they have abs and and taking that time to to like do that Mm -hmm. is that that's egotistical but all of the time and money that she's spent into blowing up her own butt that's not that's just sexy baby It's not ego. It's just sexy, baby. It's just a stream. That's how I live my life as stream. If I'm being honest, I kind of just feel 
bad for her because I don't feel bad for me. I live my life extreme. <laughs> I spell out with an X, <laughs> not with a KS, like those dumb losers. <laughs> I spell it with X. <laughs> no, I I feel bad because I feel like this is this has got to be some like weird psychological like I'm coping because I'm completely uninteresting in any other way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Well, the bad. the whole problem is, is about this art, like she says, men won't date me. And what what I like about this is like the psychology behind it is like, oh, because they're afraid of me. Like no one wants to date me. Oh, because I just saw sexy. <laughs> That's how sexy I am. <laughs> you, I want to be sexy so everyone will want to be with me. But I went too far. I got too sexy. Now no one wants to be with me. <laughs> No, I'm too sexy to stream. Yeah, no, she's not the problem. The men are definitely the problem. Yes, correct. With their egotistical abs. With their egotistical abs. <laughs> and their... <laughs> their butts without babies in them. <laughs> oh. Ooh, sassy girl. I'm so happy with this outfit. And it's definitely the right one. And hopefully, here's the one for me. I'm at what do you it. think? What do you think? Is he the one for her? Is it, now, what are we looking at here? Because for the listeners, is he the one for her? Well, if he's blind, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at uh, a guy that kind of looks like a British albino guy. Hey, he's not quite albino, but he's pretty pale, blonde hair. Uh, does he have eyebrows at all? I can't tell, but it might be just because they're blonde, so yeah. you know they get lost. Not. I mean, he looks. Not like a bad looking guy. He looks fine. He looks like a football player. Yeah, he looks fine. He looks Adam, like a normal, Adam. normal person. Yeah, Adam. Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm 28 years oh, he's old. He's Swedish. The only thing I know about Natasha is that she's a 27 years old. I hope I get the fun. That's the only thing he knows about her. The only thing I know about her is she's 27 years old. <laughs> well, you're about to find out a whole lot more. <laughs> you're, you're it's, about things are to... about to get <laughs> extreme. <laughs> <laughs> evening and who knows what this can bring us who knows who knows Hello. what Hello. The extreme Hello. things will happen oh, thank you. <laughs> ever done this before <laughs> you haven't no this is the first time going on day uh, go- no blind, blind day <laughs> never done this before what is that You've never done this before. You've never seen a woman with the world's biggest butt before. You've never been on a date with somebody who looks like they've been stung by 1,200 bees. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've never seen someone with a baby stuck inside the butt before? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's like, you've never been on a date before? No, just not a big date. Blind date. <laughs> not a butt date. I mean, I'm <laughs> not sorry. a big old butt date. Oh, I mean, blind date. <laughs> I just never. Uh. <laughs> what do you want to drink? Maybe tequila. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Tequila. What do you like? Cheers. Cheers. What are you famous? So, uh, he's like, he's like, what do you want to drink? She goes, I'll have the silicone. Just put it directly <laughs> in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a glass of silicone, please. <laughs> How do you feel about the doctors who keep agreeing to give her more and more butt? Lifts. Um, I think that they are um, heroes. I think. <laughs> that, are you asking me what I think of doctors right now? I think they're freaking heroes, except doctors who don't get the vaccine, and then they Losers. should be fired should and be... actually killed, and their parents and their families should be, I don't know, punished. Yeah, their ancestors <laughs> and their ancestors' ancestors. I don't care that you're a medical doctor. If you don't take the vaccine, <laughs> you're stupid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the doctors that give her the uh, butt lifts consistently at this point, I think, are breaking the Hippocratic Oath. I, th- I, th- I think that they're just having a good old laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they show the pictures to each other. Like, look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking. It's like sh- it's like passing dirty pictures to your friends in class, like little doodles that you do. <laughs> look, look what I did our butt. <laughs> well, she's like, That's a l- doctor, do you think it would look good if I do this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, please do it. 
That's what, what I picture. Yes. Do it. <laughs> yes. Do it. <laughs> do it. Oh, 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 do it. Oh. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead are her doctor. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> uh, I'm famous for my big bum. How do you get famous for that? You can be famous for everything. You can have three legs and be famous for that, you know? No. Wait, what? What is she saying? You can have a, a tree of likes? No, you have three legs. You have three legs. Oh. <laughs> you got one leg, a two leg, and three legs. <laughs> you could be famous for your three legs. My dad used to call his cock his third leg. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. He did all the time at home. <laughs> He'd be like, oh. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, look out, that's my third leg. <laughs> oh, my God. I had to pee, so I went to the bathroom, pulled my third leg out. <laughs> um, all right, I, I, you want to you want to move on from here? This we've gotten a, we've gotten s- super sized amount of this lady, and we know the ending to this. The ending is that he does not want to go on a second date, and he gouges his eyes out immediately when he gets home. That's correct, um, and he doesn't even want to come and play with my knives. I play with a little <laughs> knife play. I cut your nipples off and put them on my nipples. It's fine. It's fun. We play a little nipple play. <laughs> you switch your nipples with me. I switch your nipples with you. Oh, if you really love me, you switch our nipples. <laughs> you put some of your nipples on my butt cheeks and make pretend that my butt cheeks is your boobies. <laughs> I, it's a stream <laughs> with X. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. Yeah, Jesus. It's just... Yeah. This this lady just needs better friends. Better friends to tell her that outfit. Hey, maybe. Ridiculous. It does not do you any favors. There's plenty of other outfits that will do you justice, even with your big old booty, but that one does not do it justice. That's correct. And we got to, you know, we we just, we need to talk about your choices that you're making. Because you're just, you're making choices that, that, that you're not thinking about the consequences when you make them. Well, speaking of somebody who has friends that are completely enabling them, um, I have this thing that I wanted to show you that I found on Instagram. Okay. Um, this is uh, from, let me see, what is this, what is this uh, organization called? Real Depression Project on Instagram. Um, and so they share this thing here. And this is, uh, again, an account to help people with depression. Um, and so... Uh, and I, I've struggled with depression. I don't know about you. Have you ever had depression or felt like you um, might have depression? What about anxiety? Even? Anxiety, yes. Panic attacks, yes. Um, I go through like moments or periods where I feel like I'm depressed, but I wouldn't say that I would have like severe or chronic depression that carries throughout everything that I do. It's just kind of like, you know, it fluctuates. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes. I've had times where I needed to take medication and uh, I'm no longer and I'm happy for that. Um, and mental health, what I'm trying to say is mental health is important. Okay. We're going to mock it a bit here, but <laughs> Lame. Uh, it's, it's important, obviously. And we're not saying it's not important. Um, but some measures are counterproductive. Let's say that. Okay. Cool. And also, uh, betterhelp.com. If you could sponsor us, that'd be great. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about mental health. If you want to uh, sponsor us, we could use a sponsor. We're on episode three. We should have a sponsor by now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We should have three podcasts. We should have like four sponsors. I want that lady's butt to sponsor us. Sponsored by that lady's butt. <laughs> sponsored by butt babies. <laughs> I want to be born. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Something I don't understand is why we don't offer practical support for mental health issues. When I had severe depression, I didn't need or want to talk to someone about it. I wanted someone to come and wash the dishes that were overwhelming me. I wanted someone to be able to sort through my emails and physical mail for me. I wanted someone to do the laundry that I couldn't drag myself out of bed to do. I wanted someone to pick up my groceries so I wouldn't have to use the energy I needed for eating on traveling to get them. When I had depression, I literally couldn't get out of bed some days, and even things like brushing my hair or washing my face took an entire day's worth of energy. Talking to someone about it would not make that better. 
What can they say? Damn, bro, that sucks. Well done. I know. Talking therapies didn't help, but what did help was getting the time and space to actually rest. So many issues, so many issues are compounded by exhaustion and also judgment. People with mental illness don't need judgment, pity, or someone to talk to. Some do, but not all. What we instead need is non-judgmental practical support. Hell, maybe we could actually use the therapy we get offered if we weren't exhausted by just trying to stay alive. I'm fine now, but this has always pissed me off. If you want to help your mentally ill friends, here's a list of helpful things. Make them some food for their freezer. Do some chores around their home, and don't make them feel bad for things being messy. Ask them if they need anything. Offer to sort out their phone calls and emails out. All these things are way, are way more helpful than empty platitudes like I'm here for you, which sounds great unless you back it up. It's hollow. And yes, society should provide this service to folks with mental illnesses, and I'll die on this hill. <laughs> and that's brought to you by um, Real Depression Project. So... Are you depressed? Not Do you have anxiety? I'll tell you. I'll, let me tell you something. <laughs> we have something for you that will help you out. The, just what the doctor ordered. Slaves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. If you're depressed and all you can do is lay in bed, all you need is to make one of your friends your slave. And then you don't... First of all, you don't pay them for any of this work at all. They're just going to come over and do everything for you. <laughs> your dishes, they're going to sort out your mail. Everything that you need to do, everything that's keeping you in bed thinking, oh, God, I need to do that. It's stressing me out. They're just going to do it for you. That helps. <laughs> that helps, right? Yeah. It helps. Yeah. It helps depressed people to just do everything for them and let them wallow in their depression in bed. Yes. The thing about here's the thing about like mental health is the things that you're afraid of that you're worrying about, you're not supposed to face them. No. Duh. No. Facing them would be awful. You're supposed to avoid them. That's the cure to depression. Avoid everything that makes you feel discomfort. As long as you avoid it, it doesn't exist. So get yourself a slave <laughs> that can just that can just do everything that you need for you. Get yourself a little bell next to your bed. Oh, slave! <laughs> uh, daddy needs a foot rub because I'm feeling depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I get a pepperoni pizza, please? <laughs> and tell them I don't like the garlic aioli sauce. <laughs> don't drizzle that on my pizza. And can you chew it for me and spit it into my mouth because it's just so exhausting. Please. Chew. I just want to reserve my energy for getting better. I don't want to use my energy to chew. Oh, that is almost word for word. <laughs> I loved what I, I I really do. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, I need someone to pick up my groceries so I don't have to use the energy I need for eating on the traveling to get them. It takes you the same amount of energy to eat that it does to travel to the grocery store. That means every time you chew, you better be going, Hah! Oh, 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 I'm pooped. <laughs> Two bites in, I'm pooped. I'm depressed, Joshua. It's eating is like running a marathon. You, and I said this earlier. This is the episode of SpongeBob <laughs> where where Squidward loses his job at the Krusty Krab <laughs> and has to go live with SpongeBob. At first, SpongeBob's very nice and helps him with everything, but before long, he becomes Squidward's slave and doesn't like it, and he has to tell Squidward to get a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy into this stuff, you are the squid word, okay? Also, the type of person that ha has so such severe anxiety and depression that they are they are completely confided to their bed at all times of day, cannot be bothered to do anything at all, doesn't have friends that can come do everything for you. They they don't leave to make friends. 
So who's this imaginary person other than a slave? <laughs> other than I'm ordered. I wouldn't it be nice for I think this should be a service that's provided to all depressed people. Yeah, they want slaves. They want <laughs> you want slaves for all depressed people. <laughs> they want socialized slaves. <laughs> socialized slavery. One hundred percent. Slavery for all. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that isn't taken out of context. <laughs> no, we don't want slavery for all. <laughs> These people want slavery for all. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, it, it just seems counterproductive, right? Oh, it's compl- like if you yes. are really that person's friend, I'm not saying that you should not help people uh, with with uh, with depression. As a matter of fact, it would be very helpful for a person that's depressed for you to have your friend come over and help you do the dishes, help you sort out your mail, to be there with you to help you approach the things that you're afraid of doing. Mm-hmm. If you're a real friend, you would get them up out of bed. You'd say, "Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's make a list. The list of the things that need to be done." And and all we have to do is start crossing them off one at a time. Make make the things that are unmanageable for them actually manageable. That's how you that's how you fix and help your depression. That's cognitive behavior therapy. Yeah. Instead of instead of this weird like I am owed because I I have I, because I have depression. Talking about it doesn't really help me, okay? What I need to do is lay in bed and do nothing. That's like depression that's that's the act of depression. That is the depression voice like, yeah. in your brain. Exactly. That's acting on the depression voice. That's 100%. Mm. That's saying, I, I have committed to being depressed. Yeah. And I don't want anyone to, to help me. It's like an addict. It's like an addict who you've now taken their heroin away, right? And they want more heroin. And they go, well, I actually think that just going cold turkey, like talking about it isn't going to help me. What I need is a little bit of heroin to help me get through this. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that the uh, government should provide me a safe smoking kit. (laughs) (laughs) And the Biden (laughs) government should give me a safe smoking kit to do it. I want a pipe. (laughs) It's just, it it really is. Um, Make them some food for their freezer. So go make all their meals. Uh, who who is this person that can just go do everything for their friend? Also, yeah, like for their depressed friend. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'll go over and do everything for you. We hardly have time to do our fucking chores. We can't go helping everyone do their fucking chores. You're on your own. Yeah, this person wants like a nursing aide. Exactly. Exactly. Like, like what you know, eighty year old invalids. Yes. Need. This person wants that. Correct. I'm. Too depressed, I can't get out of the bed. I'm too depressed, I pooped my pants, wiped my butt. <laughs> Please, uh, that's you. <laughs> I'm so depressed. What I need is my friend to come over here and wipe my ass. <laughs> I just don't have I need energy. to save that energy to poop. <laughs> I need to save the energy to eat to create the poop. <laughs> I used all my energy eating, creating poop, and pooping it out my butt. I have no energy left to wipe my ass. I need a friend to come over and wipe my ass. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if it's the lady with the world's biggest (laughs) butt asking you to do this? She'll never be depressed. She is psychotic. She is permanently in a great mood, and that's what's great about her. She's not depressed at all. She should be depressed. She's like, wow, that's great. It's great. <laughs> My butt is scary. It's great. <laughs> Do some chores around their home and don't make them feel bad for things being messy. This sounds like this specific person. And also don't make me feel bad because I haven't picked up. I haven't had time to pick up. It's like, okay, th- maybe it's messy. And maybe you should feel a little bad about that. Just a little? Or, Just a little? Fair? Or... Maybe you should ask yourself, why does it bother me so much that somebody is pointing out the messiness? Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. Like, why it is this you- triggering me when you just bring up the fact that something's messy? Is it because is it because the person who's saying that is mean or is it because you have guilt over what you haven't taken care of in your life? You have a mess around you and you know that that's wrong and you refuse to do anything about it. And so when somebody points it out, you feel guilt. 
Or the, the, your ego is mm-hmm. too big. Because you have abs. Because <laughs> you have abs. Because you've... You know, you haven't used your energy to prepare food or, mm-hmm. or check your emails or do any of that. You <laughs> spent all of your energy in a depressed state, working out like a, a mad person so you could get those abs. Mm-hmm. And your ego is big. And now when somebody points something out, makes an observation about your surroundings, mm-hmm. you take offense to it because... Having somebody take even one little chip from your ego is mm-hmm. just too much. Absolutely. Because it's too inflated, so it's too Absolutely. easy to pop. That's correct. Yeah. Too easy to pop that butt. Um, <laughs> I, I also love offer to sort their phone calls and emails out. Like the one thing that when I'm depressed and I and like I'll get into bad ruts of depression or like even like uh I just I just don't feel like doing anything. The very first thing that helps me start to get out of that is sorting out my phone and calls and emails or like even my physical mail that I get in the mail. Like going through that's like taking that first step is what helps your depression. So having someone come over and do all that shit for you, for me, I think that afterwards I would feel even more guilt because now I owe that person. If you have a friend that's going to come over and do all these things for you, are you going to go do that for them when they're feeling depressed? Because I don't think the type of person who's gonna, who just wants a slave to come over and do everything <laughs> for them is going to go help their friend too. Also, it's like, I guess you'd have to be very trusting of your friend to let them go through your emails. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know. What if this person's getting emailed like nudie pics from people? They're like, check my nudes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if you're like, if you're listening and you're like, this is bullshit, like, no, depressed people, like, you know, depression is real, man. I I agree. Depression is real. Look up cognitive behavior therapy. It's all about, uh, like, it's all about actually, and, and any therapy, you know, if read any, any psychiatrist, any book about, about, about therapy at all. It's pretty much everything is about uh, taking what you're afraid of. And 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 putting you in front of it. What is that called? It's called something. Exposure. I don't know. You don't Spo- know? I, the first word is exposure. It is? Exposure therapy? I think so. Uh, it's something like that. It, it has exposure in it. <laughs> We're so dumb. This is this is not this is not Joe Rogan, okay, <laughs> folks? <laughs> this isn't an, this is more Anthony Fauci than Joe Rogan over here. We're just making it up as we go here. <laughs> It's we ex- don't have a fact checker. It's extreme. It's extreme <laughs> therapy. No, um, <laughs> but it's about exposing you to the things that you're that you're uh, you're actively trying to shut out, and the act of trying to shut everything out is what is stressing you out. Is because you keep you keep uh, you keep that those things keep happening to you. Everything you shut out exists in reality, and then it, you keep having to approach it. You keep having to face it. Yeah. Whereas it, it would be much easier to just face it head on. Yeah. Con- confronting the things that make you feel, you know, uncomfortable. And even though you might feel exhausted and you might feel, you know, a, a sense of hopelessness, mm-hmm. just getting out there and doing something, even the simple task of putting a dish in the dishwasher in the moment it might feel like hell because of your depression but the result from that is even from that small action it's giving you something to to give your mind a sense you've at least accomplished something Mm -hmm. you're doing something you can make it no matter how small of a thing that is yep is you are doing something as opposed to nothing if you're trying to crawl out of depression another great way to think of things is um is uh, what can I do today that just makes today a little bit better than yesterday? Yeah. So what can I do today to be just a little bit better than yesterday? If it's just that one dish, let it be just that one dish. And then that's all you have to do. And and go lay in bed and be depressed more if that's, if that's what you truly need. But make every day a little bit better. Do one more thing the next day. Do, take it one small step at a time and you can crawl out of it. But don't shut down and make everyone do everything for you. I just don't understand how you can put this out as like real advice. This page, this real depression project has like a bunch of followers and a bunch of like people that I, I assume do probably have depression and anxiety. I see so much bad advice for depression and anxiety for young people. And like, yeah, 
And a lot of it, a lot of it is just like make excuses. Yep. Make excuses, blame others, and it's not working. These people are miserable to be around. Make excuses and then also expect nobody to ever judge you for anything. Yeah, never. Don't ever judge anyone for anything. You and cannot judge my that my decisions ever. And it's like what if what if what you're doing is hurting you? Yeah, cuz I I kind of think that's like unrealistic. Like the world is not safety padded in any way. Mm -hmm. You will encounter things that are uncomfortable everywhere you go. So if you go around with the mentality of expecting never to be criticized, that you should feel happy and right and have your ego in that perfect inflated bubble at all times, yeah. then you are definitely going to have it popped at just the smallest of infractions. Yep, absolutely. And I feel like it's doing yourself a great disservice. Your, yeah, your goal in life shouldn't be constant happiness either. Yeah. It's impossible. It's impossible. And and you'll you'll always be left feeling like, this it's I'm not doing something right because I'm not constantly happy. No one's constantly happy. No one. Even if you go online and look at social media and you see someone who seems to be happy all the time, you're only seeing small glimpses of what their life truly is. Yeah. Um. Well, it also puts like this weight on ha happiness is almost like, um, you know, like sadness is an emotion you should avoid mm -hmm. when I don't think you should avoid be it's okay to be sad mm -hmm. it's okay to feel unhappy or feel those you know emotions that have a bit of a sting to them it's okay to feel those things it's not okay to let those feelings take complete control of your life and keep you from doing what you probably want to do for yourself like no I doubt there's anybody who is saying to themselves I want somebody to check my emails because I don't want to do it. Well, I mean, there probably are those people, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I don't. I don't think that there's. What? What? I lost my train of thought. What was I trying to say here? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that was going. I was going on a roll, and I felt good about it, and then it just, it just fizzled died. out. Fizzled out. You know how I? Had I a butt you know baby how, and it fizzled out. You know how <laughs> I feel. How do you feel? Scared. Scared. <laughs> big big butt. <laughs> I was so scared, Lauren. You've but no you idea. confronted the fear head on. I confronted the fear head on. I even watched a whole video and I was scared the whole time. I was so scared. My little pee pee was so scared. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I have to hide. I have to hide inside myself. Sometimes I see things that make my penis go inside myself and out my ass. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving forward, I uh, if if you want, uh, everyone, please go follow Real Depression Project on Instagram. Some great tips uh, if you're depressed. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, last but not least, this is a uh, parents of Los Alamitos fifth graders angry at school district. Am I saying that right, Los Alamitos? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My parents tell us that their children came home from camp. They were asking a lot of questions about gender and pronouns. The parents then reached out to the camp director, who told them that counselors, biological males who identify as they, them, are permitted to spend the night in cabins with the young girls. <laughs> in the parking lot, we were elementary so, school. Wait, was, first of all, first so of all, already sweet, sick, hilarious, sick, dope. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent awesome. This is a great, great idea. If you're a boy and you're at summer camp and you want to go sleep in the girls, oh, and you don't even have to say I identify as a woman. Did you notice that? You just had to identify as as non-binary. Not I use they them. I get to see boobies. <laughs> I get to see boobies. That's great. That's this is. I, I have no problem with this. This is genius. Okay. Man, it used to be so hard to see a boobie. You had to like sneak oh, behind it's a so boobie easy with now. a little peep, a little uh, peeper hole. Yeah. Now you can just go. I'm they them. I yeah. get to see. It. Bring me the boobies. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> 
Almeida's a group of parents. No parent should feel the way I feel after knowing what could have happened to my daughter. Upset by the what she could have had a dope time. Organized science camp. <laughs> I contacted the school and I asked them if they were able to confirm that there was not a man actually sleeping in the same cabin as the girls. Uh, they were not able to confirm that. That <laughs> means that there was a phone call where they said. Um, hey, that trip that uh, you took my daughter on at this uh, for school, for school. <laughs> yeah. Was there a man sleeping with her? We can't confirm that. <laughs> Define, uh, we can't man. Define man. Define <laughs> man. This is more of a they, them kind of situation, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I Was there um, a man sleeping in the room with your daughter? Yes. But did they think that they were a man? No. 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 Uh, Did they think Well, that- maybe. <laughs> well, maybe. It, it, it's kind of in between. Maybe some <laughs> some days, maybe. Yes. Was there a man? Yes, there was a man sleeping <laughs> with your daughter. <laughs> oh, your daughter? Yes, she slept with many men. <laughs> oh, your daughter? Yes, she was with a different man every night. Your, your daughter told them to say they were they, them. Yeah, this was your daughter's idea. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, ma'am, this this whole thing was your, da- your daughter's your yeah, daughter's idea. When the camp directors walked into the cabin, your daughter grabbed the counselor and said, "No, no, it's okay. There are they them." I'm they them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm they them, bro. <laughs> I'm just in here hanging out with my girls because like I'm a they them. It's okay. He's a they them. Just get out. Get out. I'm trying to get some fucking pussy here. <laughs> 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 Leave me alone. I'm they them. Oh. <laughs> Trying to get some fucking pussy. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> Leave me alone, Ken Castle, Dave. <laughs> oh, Trying to get some fucking pussy. <laughs> The parents say their fifth grade girls told them some of the biologically male counselors at Camp Pally. Oh, so I, I'm sorry. It's counselors. As Which they, them. It, it's not. It's not that the other fellow campers. It's the counselors that identified as they them would stay. So, so even uh, more awesome. Even <laughs> more dope. Those kids got to sleep with the adults. Those kids got to sleep with the adults. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh my I went to summer camps with the adults, <laughs> all the grown ups, all the all the grown ups. <laughs> um, no, it's just <laughs> it's so. Well, first of all, I I I guess I haven't really been to camp. Do the camp counselors sleep with the kids? Uh, in the same beds, Joshua. <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't sound right. It's kind of like a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory situation, you know, where the the, gra- the grandma and the grandpas were sleeping like feet to feet in the beds. Okay, well, that's camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of old people that can't get out of bed. I'm depressed. <laughs> go move. I go take care of my mail, please. Charlie, put the cabbage soup in my mouth for me. <laughs> Dingling, slave boy. I need help. <laughs> um, okay, so in movies and stuff that I've seen, and 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 friends that I've known that went to camp, there's like the 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 cabin has just like the kids, and then there's a cabin for the counselors, but the counselors like hang around to make sure they all fall asleep, but they don't sleep in the same cabin. Um, Unless it's like a different room, but they I don't mean, sleep in I, the same room. I went to a summer camp and and we and did fuck the adult. <laughs> Hell yeah, no, <laughs> no, we did have like our female counselors. They stayed in the same cabin as us. They had like a separate room, though, right? Separate room, their own bed, their own like space, yeah. but it was connected to the building. So if something you know happened, they could get there really quickly mm-hmm. especially because like overnight they still need to be you know watching over the children in a way yeah because we were children yes of course of course well these camp counselors are watching over the children they're just all hanging out they're like hey girls want to see a dick <laughs> <laughs> hey ladies get over here you want to see a penis <laughs> you want to see a feminine penis <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a lady dong <laughs> 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 Oh, man. All right. And spent three nights sleeping in cabins with the young girls. They're asleep. They use the shower. They go to the restroom. Camp Pally confirms, per California state law, we place staff in cabins they identify with. Parents say... 
I identify as that cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as the cabin with the hottest boobies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I saw the hot girl go in that cabin. I identify with whatever that cabin is. Uh, I identify with the hot chicks, <laughs> wherever the hot chicks are. <laughs> what do I need to say to get into that cabin? That you're that I'm a girl. Uh, I don't really want to do. Can I get away with they them? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay then. Fine. I'm they them. Yeah. <laughs> I've been they them before. <laughs> People call me that. <laughs> They're not accusing anyone of a crime, but they are angry. The school district did not let parents know about the policy. A spokesperson told us I wish the district takes all. I wish the, they had let the parents know, just like a, a simple message that goes out like, hey, parents, just want to let you know some day them's going to sleep in the rooms with your kids. <laughs> hey, I uh, just wanted to let you know some of the uh, some of the camp counselors that will be sleeping with your daughters will have penises. Just want to let you know. All right, goodbye. Hey, parents, just want to let you know Tyler's having a sick ass time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, parents, just want to let you know that camp this year is gonna be extra sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just a picture of of the they them counselor with all the girls around. Them. <laughs> Oh my god. How was camp, Sarah? Awesome. Got finger blasted all <laughs> summer. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> my counselor was a they them. So his fingers were soft. Okay. Complaints and concerns seriously and is currently investigating. These parents say they just want others to be informed of the policy. So now, you know that some of these parents, though, some of the pictures of the parents that we're seeing, when they found this out, they were like, they were they, them, what? <laughs> <laughs> they had a, a fit. And the church, the whole church knows about it, too. And they let them sleep with them, they, them. <laughs> They had one of them they thems in there. <laughs> and the older people have to be like, what is that? What do you mean they them they? <laughs> no, they them. <laughs> well, you mean a lot of people were in that cabin with them? They had a lot of counselors? Yeah, I know. You told me already them they them was in there. <laughs> <laughs> but who is them? <laughs> you ain't tell them who them is yet. How many of them were there? <laughs> <laughs> You mean all of them? <laughs> Just some of them. What were they doing? <laughs> Just the one person who does not get it. <laughs> Cannot get it. I don't understand. What damn are you talking about? <laughs> oh, them. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know them. Them girls or them counselors? <laughs> 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 decisions for their own families. It's awful that children had to even experience this in fifth grade camp. If I was aware of it and I had initialed something saying that this was going to be done at this outdoor science camp, I would have that's, kept that's my That's the funniest home. part. Is this is science camp. <laughs> oh, man. Would you, you don't think that's funny? That this is science camp? I think that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, what's funny about it, though? Well, because Tyler's doing a lot of scientific research on the bodacious babes this summer. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot of research. <laughs> My summer as a they, they. <laughs> Hypothesis. I'm going to get pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I tested out my hypothesis and it was correct. I got a lot of pussy. <laughs> oh my God. And that's my science project. <laughs> Yeah, so those parents insist that they should have been informed about this policy before they sent their kids off to camp. And now they want the school district to step up. They want them to inform the parents of the hundreds of other kids who were also on that trip. We're live tonight. Los Alamitos. I'm Sandra Mitchell, KTLA 5 News. Sharon Micah, back to you. Well, you know, a lot of people say, OK, OK, well, uh, what do you oh, so what do you think of that? What do you think of that? Huh? What do you think of that? <laughs> what do you think of them? They, they right there. I think of that. They, them, uh, there is a pretty, pretty fine set of balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love them boys and them girls. Them girls and them camp counselors. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Oh, oh. man. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that's just zero common sense, I would say. <laughs> like, just zero. But, yeah. The world is... <laughs> world is interesting. Um, well, this has been Working Crass Podcast. Um, thank you very much for listening and tuning in. Uh, before we get to what we learned, um, I do want to say uh, that uh, if you're listening, please go follow us on uh, all platforms. We're on Instagram at Working Crass Pod. Uh, our podcast is on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Buzzsprout is where it's hosted. Um, and you can also, oh, what else? There's got to be something else. Um, I said our Instagram. Oh, you can watch all of these episodes on YouTube. Uh, we're Working Crass Podcast on YouTube. Uh, every podcast that you listen to also has a video version, so uh, go check it out. Um, and you can find all that stuff on our uh, Instagram page, Working Crass Pod. Okay. Um, now that I've plugged everything, um, oh, also share this if you enjoy it. Uh, we're going to try to do some clips and stuff, so share those too. What did you learn today, Lauren? I learned that uh, Tyler's going to be hanging out in the girls' cabin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> girls' cabin and uh, first science experiment, that of anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> I, learned how, I learned how to make a butt baby born. <laughs> All you got to do is squeeze the butt, <laughs> and then the butt baby is born. <laughs> I want to be born. <laughs> All right. Good night. Night. Bye.